We are Cam and Heather on Sea Clef, and we are on the trip of a lifetime. Come share in our adventures as we take you through the Great Lakes to Chicago, down through the river system of the Midwest, along the panhandle of Florida, across the Gulf of Mexico, and down the west side of Florida, crossing through the Okeechobee Waterway to Eastern Florida. Then share in our adventures as we continue throughout the Bahamas and back up the Eastern seaboard, finally returning to Canada on America's Great Loop. Today's voyage takes us from Sylvan Beach, across a very smoky Oneida Lake, to Brewerton, where we filled up with fuel. Before continuing our journey to Lock 7, our planned destination. Good smoky morning. Yeah. You'd think we were in the Smoky Mountains, but we're on Smoky Oneida Lake. Heather's having trouble breathing today, so uh, she's wearing a mask. We uh, we decided to run the lake at speed. We want to get fueled up on the other side because the prices of diesel are good on the west side of Oneida, and uh, and then we're going to try to make uh, Lock Seven today. Uh, apparently you don't want to go to Lock 8 because it can get a little rough or bumpy out uh, that close to the lake. Uh, so we would plan to do the last lock and cross the lake all in one go. Uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, which would put us into uh, Canada one day before Canada Day, which would be kind of fun. Maybe we'd be in Belleville or perhaps Kingston for Canada Day. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so yeah, they might on fire welcome us back to Canada. They might indeed. So we had to put in the night on the free wall in Silver Beach. They were kind of close to the bridge, so a few times I heard cars speeding over the bridge, but it was, it was good. It was nice there. Unfortunately, yesterday with the weather being so cracky, none of the fun sort of amusement parks were open. None of the little shops were open. Nobody was in town. Yeah, it was kind of a ghost town. We went out for dinner with our friends and uh, nice dinner, a really great visit. We're hoping we'll be able to do some more runs with them or maybe see them in the uh, in the Trent Severn or Georgia Bay perhaps. Uh, beautiful Fleming 58 they have. Misty Bay. We will check in on the other side. Oh yeah. Our travels today were 55.3 nautical miles, and it took us 9 hours and 45 minutes to make our way to today's final destination on the top side of Lock 7. Our average speed was just 5.7 miles per hour. We traversed 6 locks today. The smoke as we crossed Lake Oneida was terrible and we were happy to have gotten it out of the way. We might have chosen to wait out the smoke, but the crossing conditions for that day were excellent, so we decided to just get it done. It took a long time to fuel up in Brewerton. We were third in line for refueling, and unlike fueling up a car, each boat takes several hundred gallons of fuel, and it takes time. You can see from our track that we waited and circled quite a bit before deciding to dock to wait our turn. Once fueled, we were underway again, and we would shortly leave the Erie Canal to begin our voyages on the Oswego Canal. Lock 23. Bound. This is our last lock on the Erie Canal. And then we'll switch and turn over to the Oswego Canal. We got a bit of a s slow start this morning. We, it took about two and a half hours to get fueled up in Brewerton. But uh, we're underway again.
just coming to what will be the end of the Erie Canal for us. If we carry on this way, we would be on the Western Erie, but we are turning up here and getting on the Oswego, which will take us to Lake Ontario. We just turned on to the Oswego a little while ago, and currently this is the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Base. I see a sign that says Syracuse Canal Maintenance. And with all these canals, they uh, definitely do need to do a lot of maintenance. I know that when the locks have broken down, they've got them uh, going again really fast. One, Oswego, and uh, there's a bridge. Looks like there's ten feet of lift. Ten feet of lift and uh, drop, I guess. And uh, there's a bridge that's just past the lock that he has to lift when we go through. are approaching Oswego Lock 2. Lock 02. This is the first of two Fulton locks and uh, one of the unique things about this lock is that when we go in we're just going to go part way in. We'll tie up at the uh, the back of the lock, the south end of the lock, uh, because there will be a bridge blocking us but after we drop our 18 feet we will easily be able to clear the bridge. So obviously if you're southbound, you're gonna to wanna to come in and make sure you're past that bridge so that when you lift up, that you don't bump your head on it. So again, we're still before the O2 Fulton Lock and just look at that water just flying out from the dam, which is great. Yeah, it explains that uh, there's a chance of some pretty strong current when we exit the dam. When you uh, enter the lock, you'll see this is the bridge that Heather was talking yeah. about. But by the time we're lowered down 18 feet, we'll be well clear of this bridge that we can't tie in front of. Locky too. Oswego, lock two. 18 foot drop. 17.8 feet, I guess. Uh, very friendly lock staff here. Came over, said hello, introduced themselves, told us that they uh, post on Facebook uh, about river conditions or circumstances. Try to keep loopers up to date. I'm just watching my line go as opposed to having to work. So we're at uh, lock three, E3. Our gates are closed already. No, they're not. I heard them. I thought they were closed. Yes, so they're closing now. And 
you can see the mist from the waterfall that's right here. So the, the amount of water going through there is an absolute boil. The, the speed of the water down there is significant. So when you come out of lock three, there's a lot of push apparently, and you really have to be careful controlling the boat. So we were warned about it from friends of ours, and we've read about it in the, in the book. So we're going to be particularly careful as we come out. We are at the bottom of Lock 3 on the Oswego Canal. I'm just waiting for those doors to open before we leave. The gates are open and away we go. So as you, as you get out of the lock, we're coming down the canal and it seems quite tame. But we can see ahead on the port side there's a little waterfall. So we have to keep that red marker that's ahead on our starboard side, which means our right side. And uh, we're going to have all that current from that waterfall there pushing on our port side. And if we don't stay on the proper side of that red marker, we've got these big boulders that I think are parts of previous locks. So Cam's getting some, uh, some gusto going here so we can manage this and I am filming with one hand holding on to the boat. Squirrels happening in the water there. Like it was, it was pulling us over to port. Cam says there was some swirling, and that's probably why I felt that pull to port. We're done lock 03. Now before you get confused, there is no lock 04. They planned for it originally and then as they built it they decided they didn't need it, but they didn't want to renumber everything. So our next lock is the Minetto lock 05. Dock. It is just before lock 05, the Manetto lock, and uh, these folks have put a lot of effort into making a nice dock and making this a welcoming place uh, for uh, transient boaters to stay. Uh, this is lock E5 that's ahead of us. There's a big toe that's in there right now, but they come out. We're going to go in. Fortunately, they are walking up, so we don't have to wait before we go down. So we're on our way in as soon as this toe's out of our way, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to lock down. This is our, probably our second last lock of the day. I think we're gonna be doing, we're certainly doing eight tomorrow, and possibly seven as well. We're in lock five, hoping they'll close the doors shortly. And, uh, this is a, uh, the next lock is three and a half, three and a bit miles from us. This is uh, Minetto, New York, and our lift will be 18 feet. So 
sorry, our drop. Will be 18 feet. You can see the waterfall back there. It was a, there was a better shot of it. Maybe we'll get a shot of it from the bottom. It's, it's quite, quite a pretty horseshoe uh, shaped waterfall. There was significant debris within Lock 5, and we had to be quite careful during our departure from the lock, including a few times where we actually disengaged the engines to ensure that the debris did not get into our props. Looking at lock six right now, let's go lock six. The lights are not lit. We radioed twice, they have not answered our call. And so we're just waiting to find out Is it the what our instructions are. Six, 20 foot drop on the Oswego. It's the high dam lock. And if you look over here, you can see the one heck of a dam. A lot of roiling, boiling water there. So we made it to the lock, uh, lock seven. We are um, uh, stuck here, uh, actually, and with no real access to shore. We are over on uh, the, uh, the wall uh, for the lock. We radioed the lock master from lock six, which is just back there and asked him if he thought we'd have time to get through seven. We uh, didn't get a response from him. And uh, he never actually, we communicated two or three times, but he never responded once. So with nothing else to do, while well, we wait till tomorrow morning when we can use the lock, I thought I'd come over here and check it out. Looks like it's in the down lowered position and uh, maybe we could walk across and make our way around and out somewhere over there maybe we'd go to town we'll see uh, anyway I guess we'll be the first ones through this lock tomorrow uh, we have two more locks of course before we get to Lake Ontario and uh, we want to cross tomorrow, so we are going to be, you know, up and at them as soon as they open the locks, we'll want to be here. <laughs> 